Hi there, in this video we'll be looking at using the Siema Carousel, and I hope I said that correctly, apparently it means hey or hello in Polish, so I probably butchered that, but nonetheless it's a straight up JavaScript carousel, it's quite lightweight, which means you can use this without worrying about bloating up your bundle size. At the same time, in this application, we'll be using Webpack and Babel because I want to write ES 2015 code and I also want to use bundling. So let's first install our dev dependencies. This will be Webpack. This will also be Babel Core, Babel Loader, and Babel Preset Env. We can use dash dash save dev to save this to our dev dependencies. And if you haven't done this already, you may want to run npm init-y to create a basic package.json. After that, we want to install Siemma. And that's what we'll be using to create our carousel. Then I want to create an index.html and an app.js. Finally, we'll create a webpack.config.js and this will allow us to configure our webpack and then we'll need a way to run this in the browser. We can simply use Webpack Dev Server or we can use HTTP Server. It's up to you. For simplicity, you can either run npm install http-server-g and we can run it by saying code dot to open up VS Code and at the same time HTTP Server dot. So here we have an empty project. Inside of our index.html, we can run HTML colon 5 to create a new HTML project. Once we have the basis, so a boilerplate HTML document, we can save the file and then I'm going to move on to our webpack.config.js. Configuring webpack is quite simple. And all we need to do is run module.exports and export a new object that has the context of the current directory name. So basically we're telling webpack, hey, we want to look inside of this directory our entry file is going to be app.js. Our output file will have the file name of perhaps inside of a dist directory slash bundle.js. And then we'll also set up some module rules. I want to say, I want to test for any file that contains .js. I want to exclude the node modules folder and if you have any other folders that you want to exclude, you can add them to this list. And when it finds one of these files, I want to use the following loader, Babel loader, with the options of presets. And the presets I want to use is env. So options should actually be an object, not an array. But after that change, this is everything we need inside of our webpack config. So now that we have all that finished, we can head over to our index.html. We can create a script with the source of slash dist slash bundle.js. That's our bundle file. Any changes we make inside of app.js will subsequently be minified, changed to ES5, and we'd have a file inside of a dist directory called bundle.js. We're not quite at that point yet though. The first thing we want to do is create a div with the class of carousel. Inside of our div, I then want to create other divs, the text of which is going to be slide. I'm going to add a dollar because that's going to be a placeholder for a number. And the number of slides that I want is going to be five. This here is Emma abbreviation. I have a video on my channel locking at Emmet, so check that out if you want to see how to power up your HTML and CSS workflow. After that, we can hit tab, and then we have slides one through to five. If we save our file, we have nothing too interesting. We also currently have an error inside of our console saying that we can't find the bundle.js file. I'll be fixed in a moment because we're going to open up our terminal and run webpack dash dash watch. As you can see, this takes our app.js and we then get a bundle.js file. When we refresh our page, we no longer have that error. But at this point in time, we also don't have a carousel. So how do we fix that? 
let's head over to app.js and this is where all of the magic happens and you'll see that it's very, very simple. So let's import CMR from CMR. We'll make a new carousel and that's done by making a new variable. So const carousel is equal to a new CMR. We can then pass some configuration options here. And the first option is going to be a selector. And that's going to be the div with the class of carousel that we created earlier on. So if we go back and look at our markup, you can see here that we have this div with a class of carousel. Once we tell our carousel that this is the selector and we save the file, you can see that our HTML now changes. Our document is different. If we hover over our slide one and we hold down the left mouse button, we can pan backwards and forwards. And by letting go, this allows us to navigate to a different slide. So we can go backwards and forwards till we hit slide five. But when I hit slide five, I think I'd like this to loop back to slide one. Quite simple. All we do is add the loop equal to true. And when we refresh, we can see that when we get to five and we try and go ahead, we get put back to slide one. So this is quite awesome. We can then add a duration of perhaps a thousand and look at the difference that this makes. So when we slide from slide one to slide two, notice that it then takes a second for the animation. We can change our animation if we add some easing. Let's add some ease in. Watch now how we get a different feel for our slide. We can do the same for ease out. And we also get a different feel for our slide. As well as this, we can also change the amount of items per page. We can add the per page option. So if we said per page two, and we refreshed our page, you could see that we have two items per slide. We can also have events that fire when the slide initializes or when the slide changes. Let's look at an on init event. Let's simply use a console.log on init. When our CMR initializes, let's refresh the page and instantly you can see in the console we have on init. We can also fire another event when we change slide. So let's add an on change. We can give that a console.log of on change. And if we refresh the page, you can see we initially get our on init, but when we change the slide, we get the on change event. So hopefully you can think of different things and different contexts which you could use these different events. But I feel like having two buttons. I don't wanna keep going backwards and forwards like this. I want a button that I can click to go backwards or forwards. Underneath our carousel, let's make two buttons. The first with the ID of forward and the second with the ID of backwards. Inside of our app.js, we can scroll down and we can get the element by ID and that ID will be forward. So now we have a reference to this element inside of this forward variable. Let's do the same for backwards. And in each case, let's add an event listener. So we can say forward dot add event listener. We could listen for the click event and on the click event, we want to say carousel dot next. This allows us to go forward. And if we copy this and say backwards dot add event listener, instead of next, we can say prev for previous. Let's save our file and refresh our document. I'm going to quickly add some text for our buttons. If we then click our forward button, you can see that we're going forward through the slides. Our on change event is also firing. If we click backwards, you can see that we're going backwards 
and at the same time our on change event is firing once again. But I don't want text for my carousel, I want an image. So how might we do that? Well, it's quite simple and it involves finding some images first. So let's find some images at Unsplash. I'm going to get five random images and I'm going to add the source of those images equal to the images that I find. So let's have five different images. And if we refresh our page, you can see everything is completely broken and that's because it doesn't really make sense to have two images per page. Let's save that and you'll see that we have just the one image. We can then hit forward to go forward and you may want to normalize the size of your images or we can hit backward to go backward. But this time we have a list of images instead of text. But I don't want the user to have to click forward or backward or even drag through the carousel to have to go next. So how can we do that? Well, it's maybe potentially simpler than you thought. All we need to do is use set interval. And set interval allows us to say carousel.next. And all we have to do is specify a timeout. So this is not anything to do with CMR at all, it's simply just JavaScript and we can say potentially the timeout is four seconds. For demonstration though, I'm gonna simply say two at this point, but you can choose a value of your own. When we refresh our page, I'm not gonna click anything and you should be able to see that our carousel cycles through the different images. Even though we're using this different set interval method rather than clicking a button, you can see that our on change event is still firing. So that's how we use CMR to create awesome JavaScript carousels. It's very lightweight. I do suggest you use this inside of your applications. At least I found it useful inside of my projects. What do you think of this tutorial? Let me know inside of the comment section below. And of course, if you'd like to check out paulhalliday.io for more premium courses and content, go ahead and do so. If you want a discount code, let me know in the comments. I'll hook you up with one. Until next time, hit that subscribe button to stay updated and I'll see you soon in my next video.